Morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Beth Evans. I'm from Gavi. Um, I work with Lee Hampton, who some of you may know. I'm going to talk now a bit about three things. Um, first of all, for those of you who may not know Gavi quite as much, I will talk about a bit about Gavi, who we are, what we do, and our links to diagnostics. Most people know us as working on vaccines. Secondly, I want to share a brief overview of some RDT pilot studies that we're supporting, which have relevance in terms of some findings related to all the work that's been going on around surveillance and particularly on RDTs. And finally, operationally and building on some of the great questions we just heard in the last session, we want to talk about the support Gavi wishes to open next month for countries to apply to get RDTs from Gavi this year. And so that would be to support all of the different surveillance efforts. The first two sections will be brief, largely for info. The last part, I'd really love inputs throughout. Feel free to, to speak whenever, and hopefully we'll have time at the end for any questions as well, because we'd like to hear from countries about how we can make this work operationally, what you need from us, and we'll hopefully make it as simple as possible in terms of what we need from you for this process. In terms of Gavi, we largely support vaccines, um, most childhood vaccines, as well as HPV, malaria, some new, new platforms. Countries pay co-financing towards the procurement of vaccines, and Gavi also provide cash support for health system strengthening. Uh, diagnostics actually has no co-financing, so the country does not need to contribute to the procurement of uh, diagnostics at the moment. That is intended to change over the over the future, um, but until at least the end of 2025, there's no co-financing. Gavi supports, depending exactly on the terms, 57 countries. Uh, they graduate after a certain um, income threshold is reached, and you can see on the map here where those countries are and who is eligible. In terms of Gavi's diagnostic support, we started with yellow fever in 2018. That was a big success, 21 countries applied, they received procurement support for the yellow fever testing, and it's increased the samples tested uh, in, in sub-Saharan Africa in particular. In 2022, so last year, we expanded this to also cover other vaccine uh, and diagnostic areas, including cholera. We work largely on supporting the kind of twofold, one on the supplier side in terms of supporting the work with other organizations in helping diagnostics get to market that are suitable for the use cases we're looking at. And the other bit is providing funding for the procurement of diagnostics uh, in partnership with UNICEF Supply Division. Um, our budget is $55 million for this kind of period across all of these vaccine and diagnostic areas. Um, and that includes the procurement of tests and some other um, uh, funding and research that, that, that we uh, invest in. Okay, that's a bit about Gavi. Hopefully that's enough about us. In terms of the RDT pilot studies, we just wanted to flag that there are currently uh, several ongoing pilot studies that Gavi are funding uh, by the CDC, by Johns Hopkins, Epicentre and MSF across a range of countries. Uh, that are looking at addressing some of the questions that people have brought up. Uh, for example, how accurate, useful uh, at tracking incidents can RDTs be in the field using different tests? Secondly, looking at the operational aspects that someone from Lebanon also brought up earlier in terms of where is the right place to have RDTs, um, to have them at the right place at the right time without too much wastage so that they're there to inform uh, if there may be outbreaks and also uh, ideally, you know, not, not sit there and not be used because they're not needed. These projects are gonna take place over, most have started over the next year. Um, and so they'll be doing data collection for the rest of 2023 with some preliminary results available in early 2024 and throughout the year. We hope that these will be of relevance to the GTFCC and people here um, in terms of informing some of those surveillance guidelines. Um, and we will also, as Gavi, use them to inform our support so that we're learning from these experiences in countries and applying them to our future support. Okay, 
Um, this is the main section, and this is where we'd really like feedback. And so um, Gavi would like to open applications for cholera RDT support next month to support RDT usage, surveillance in countries, and the insights that that can draw for uh, informing around uh, responses needed, and particularly for vaccination campaigns. Um, in terms of the, 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 the timelines, the process pieces, we intend to open this in mid-June, uh, and then if any applications are received for those countries that want to uh, apply very fast by mid-July, there would be the possibility, fingers crossed, of some distribution of RDTs before the end of the year. There will be rolling um, application dates for so for countries that aren't ready at that point, there will still be the possibility to apply and be reviewed at different windows. Um, this RDT support will be to fund the procurement of RDTs, and we have some thoughts about kind of the quantities, but that's a key part for us to, to, to align on, um, with no co-financing, but there won't be any cash support. So for those that are familiar with the vaccine, kind of the linkage between the introduction of a vaccine and the, the cash support that goes with it, this is just looking at the procurement of RDTs and the cash support for countries that are also getting vaccine support, they could use health system strengthening funding as well as other sources of funding that are available for diagnostics and for surveillance in order to support uh, the rollout, the trainings and other activities. We tried to keep uh, our thoughts on the application process as simple as possible and to tie in as much as possible to the existing guidance from the GTFCC, as well as from the work that countries have already done, for example, through national cholera plans um, and other forms of preparedness. The, the, the main thing that Gavi needs in order to approve support is how many RDTs are needed in a country for a given year and then some brief documentation on readiness and how that fits with the overall kind of surveillance cholera uh, ending strategy. Um, and so that's what I want to talk a bit more about today in terms of uh, some preliminary thinking we've done on how to calculate RDT needs for the year, thinking about translating some of the guidance that we just heard on the surveillance into operational quantification that will definitely need to evolve over time, but can hopefully be uh, directional, particularly for countries that haven't yet already developed a method for themselves. However, if a country has already thought through how many RDTs would be needed for ongoing incidents monitoring, as well as for um, other forms, you know, some testing during outbreaks, we're very happy to receive different quantification methods from countries and would really actually like to learn from how that's been calculated. Um, just a brief aside in terms of products, because I think this relates as well to what we've been talking about or hearing about in terms of those thresholds, how many RDTs are used, uh, how many RDTs are necessary to, with regards to sensitivity, specificity, false positives, etc. Our plan, unless we hear otherwise, so please spe speak up if any concerns, would be to procure the two tests that uh, are currently in the UNICEF supply catalogue. Um, and should a product be a WHO pre-qualified in the future, that yeah. that would then become, that or those would become the primary products for procurement after that. Um, you don't need to speak now if any concerns throw, uh, at the end, please let us know, but um, that's that's the plan. And so that the, these uh, uh, have a few, um, I think would hopefully meet and fit the, the the um, information that was shared before in terms of the number of tests that would guide probable um, outbreak identification. Okay, thinking very operationally and in terms of quantifying how many RDTs a country may need per year in order to think about regular testing, not just in outbreaks, but then have some buffer and, and RDTs available for when there are outbreaks or when there are suspected tests. We put together this, which is hopefully slightly simpler than it looks and I'll talk through and we're very keen to hear any feedback. So 
we broke down into kind of two sections how we are thinking about how many RDTs a country may need. And this should hopefully fit any country that's going through a PAMI identification process or other forms of risk hotspot can identification. So if a country uh, identifies some surveillance units that are known to have regular cholera transmission in recent years, for example, through the PAMI process that we heard earlier this week or other methods, we're thinking about those as areas where you might want regular testing to have in-health facilities that are used to identify and or treat suspected cholera, to have RDTs on hand, to use those RDTs each day in line with the surveillance guidelines, interim guidelines that we just heard of three tests per day, and to have those on hand, because that's where there is more probability of having suspected uh, acute watery diarrhea cases um, in a health facility. And so for those regular testing areas, the calculation would be as relatively simple as what are those district surveillance units how many relevant health facilities are there within them, allow for three tests per day, and then uh, maybe take a percentage of that if there is seasonal or other variation, known variation of cholera throughout the year. For example, if, if, the, if the persistence is only throughout half of the year, then you might want to reduce that down so that that reduces the wastage. The second area is more as needed, and I think speaks to some of the uh, comments we've heard earlier this week, not necessarily having RDTs in a health facility on hand at all times, but having them more for case investigation that might be with a surveillance team at a regional level, at a district level, to be deployed as and when needed um, if suspected cases are arising. And so we're thinking here, either for other high risk areas or risk areas in a country or for just every single other surveillance unit in a country to have a, a kind of a, a blanket 120 tests per year that could be used and a, there is no uh, specific uh, guidance as to exactly where and when those should be used but that a country is free to adapt and think through where they would best be placed with whom and how best to access them for when those tests might be needed. Um, as with vaccines, we would add on a buffer on top of that to just allow adequate flow of supplies, maybe have some RDTs used in outbreaks, other uses, and that would just be on top of the um, calculations uh, that are the outputs from those previous two sections. And so just to recap, this really ideally just requires some idea of the uh, highest risk surveillance units that may be the targets or may be intended to be the targets of vaccination campaigns in future or other forms of intervention where it'd be useful to have regular testing and an idea of the number of facilities where you'd want to deploy the RDTs to in those areas. And for all the others to just have a just the number of districts and multiply through by 120 tests per year. Now we've, um, to make this easier, should this be something a country wishes to use, um, we have created a very basic Excel where you plug in the names of those um, surveillance units or districts and the number of health facilities and it will multiply through to give you the total number. This will be available alongside the application materials and should be relatively easy to use, although we're always happy to answer any questions and support with that. We've also done some relatively back of the envelope quest, uh, calculations, but hopefully informative, um, using some publicly available information on, uh, for example, the national cholera plans that are on the GTFCC website, as well as some other information about health facility mapping to estimate using this method I just described, how many RDTs would be required for Kenya, Ethiopia, and Bangladesh. And so just as an example, this method would produce 62,000 RDTs per year for Kenya, 270,000 RDTs for Ethiopia per year, and 210,000 RDTs per year for Bangladesh. 
Now, this is not the right answer, just to reinforce. This is an, a, a suggestion, and uh, we're very much open to hearing from a country that this does not sound right, it sounds too high, it sounds too low, a different method is preferred. But I just wanted to give some ballpark numbers for particularly, I've just recently spoken with, with some of the um, attendees from Kenya that, that that might help kind of think through is um, is this sounding like something that would be relevant and uh, is this a method that would make it easy to do an application and then think through some of the operational pieces further. We would love to hear any feedback on this um, and and countries, even if they don't give feedback now, can always apply with a different method for their quantification. Alongside this, the application form requires a calculation of the number of RDTs, which we've just spoken about, as well as a few details related to thinking about distribution, supply planning, and detailing some information around surveillance, referral, to just understand how, this, how the RDT deployment would fit within the existing cholera surveillance and response system within country. Now, People don't need to necessarily respond here because we will share alongside this presentation the draft application so that countries are able to have a look at that in advance and provide any feedback. But we wanted to highlight a few areas where we would love feedback from people who may be uh, filling out these application forms in the future about whether we're asking the right question in order to be able to understand and for the um, independent review committee, who would be the people reviewing at Gavi, to be able to uh, give a green light to go ahead um, to, to approve the RDTs. So there are four areas that, that we've highlighted here as areas we're keen for feedback on. Firstly, uh, in the top left, supply planning, um, we recognize that trade-off between having RDTs in the right place at the right time and the wastage that could be associated with that should there be no need to use those RDTs. Um, we, we're keen to think through and to hear a bit about uh, push-pull supply chain management, uh, planning of deliveries, um, so that that wastage is minimized. Um, and so very keen for feedback there. On the top right, in terms of distribution, we don't want to ask for a full detailed step-by-step -step, what is your kind of distribution strategy in a country in order to uh, deliver IDTs, but we would like some confidence that it would integrate well within existing systems or be possible to add on to, to something um, that is relatively well established. And so we were imagining that some other medical, uh, basic medical supplies, that perhaps this could be integrated within that distribution. And so we've included ring ringer lactate, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, as an example. And it would be great to hear if any other countries have experience with, for example, other RDT uh, distribution to other levels or other commodities that it might be really um, efficient to deliver RDTs with to those surveillance units and to those health facilities. Um, on the bottom left, in terms of documentation, we're looking to minimize the need for documentation to be duplicated from other sources. If a country, for example, is already going through a preventative OCV application, there may be sections from there that can just be referenced rather than uh, recreated. National cholera plans for those countries that have developed them or are in process of developing them could also be referenced. If there's any other ideas about existing documentation that we can encourage people to attach and just talk to, you know, label the relevant section, that would be useful for us to just make these application forms as simple as possible. And finally, on the bottom right, in terms of country interest, we'd be really keen to hear whilst we're here and in person and able to talk through the application or ask any other questions, as well as afterwards via email, if any countries are interested in applying, particularly for those in the coming months where we would potentially be able to provide some support in order to, to get those early applications in. If you or you know of countries that are interested, then please reach out to me. Uh, my email is here or Lee. And you can find us because I think we're the only two people in the room wearing bow ties today. So that's how to find us. Um, 
and we can share with you the draft funding guidelines, the draft application form and the draft quantification form. And should we hear any feedback about how to adapt that, um, we will probably iterate before the final ones are hopefully published in mid-June. Um, and so I'm doing good for time. Um, okay, and so I just wanted to flag a few things that are looking a bit further ahead before hopefully opening up for any questions or live feedback. Um, I just wanted to first of all situate this within the other forms of testing and support that have been uh, discussed and actually will be discussed in the, the later sessions this afternoon, that we right now are focusing on RDTs in terms of Gal GAVI cholera diagnostic support. And in the future, would hope to expand this to PCR testing in terms of doing confirmation of outbreaks um, and other and, and the other uh, use cases for PCR testing. In order to do that, um, we would need target product profiles, as well as um, just like we've done with the RDTs, some kind of operational approach thinking to the quantification needed in terms of how many um, reagents, as well as potentially PCR machines because there is the possibility for Gavi to also support the equipment. Um, and so um, there are a few steps there in terms of um, the global side, in terms of thinking through uh, what's needed to get to validated tests so that we could open support. Um, but we just wanted to flag that that's on the horizon and something that we're interested in moving towards. Secondly, um, we know that there's a lot of guidance that's been discussed here that we build on, hopefully, within the application forms, and we intend to continue to revise in accordance with that. So, um, for example, that three RDTs per day in those uh, surveillance units with regular cholera, potentially that if that evolves, then we would kind of fit with that. We're aiming to be as integrated as possible and to, and to uh, provide bi-directional feedback as is useful to the GTFCC and partners. And finally, um, I think speaking to some of the concerns that maybe have been raised, or not necessarily concerns, but some of the, the, the recognition that RDTs aren't perfect, um, we hope and we have seen in some cases in other uh, markets, whether that's vaccines or diagnostics, that by creating more demand or creating more consistent demand, there is also a drive towards more validated tests and more availability. And therefore, potentially, this, this aims to uh, work as well on the supply side in terms of uh, improving the RDTs that are available. So that's everything from me. Um, thank you all for your time. And please let us know if any questions. Duncan. I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, Beth. That was that was great. That was very interesting. A couple of questions, actually. What is the global capacity for these RDTs, particularly the two that you announced, because that is going to surely impact um, the application. Secondly. Um, there was discussion around actually having depots in country where RDTs might be kept that could then be rapidly distributed to clinics rather than them sitting on clinics. Related to that is the shelf life of the RDTs. Do you have any idea? Just that we can actually start to see pragmatically how that might all come together. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I'm going to start responding, but I might also defer to Lee as well as UNICEF who, who um, have been involved. So my understanding is that both the lead time for the production of those RDTs is relatively short. So once we've done approval, the production of them is relatively fast and that the total demand that we're thinking about in terms of if, if, if uh, interested countries applied would be well below the manufacturing capacity that there is. In terms of shelf life, that is partly what we're thinking of is that two deliveries per year would be logical to reduce the risk of expiry. But uh, someone, I, I, I think it's over a year that the shelf life is, but um, if anyone wants to, 18 months, thank you. Lee. Yeah, both are great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, both Arcre and Abbott make malaria tests. 
So their production capacity is in the tens of millions. So this will still, I, you know, they would need some some lead time, but I'm not worried about their billing. I, the the issue is the money. It's not their not their capacity. I think. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, we in Afghanistan are in really shortage of RDTs. Out of the total suspected cases, so we have tested only for one percent. Like from out of three hundred thousand, we tested only for three thousand, and this is the available RDTs. The issue is that our government does not recognize and declare this as a cholera. So how we can apply it to Gavi to support us in provision with RDTs? This is one question. The second question is uh, still there is mm, weakened capacity in terms of differentiating cholera and non-cholera cases. So this is AWD. And we are doing our estimation based on the AWD with the hydration cases. This will overestimate a little bit the number of RDT that we need because we have to do the testing. So how this will uh, uh, be considered and applicable in your application in, in our work case. Thank you. Thank you. And super useful to hear the kind of concerns that you would have. So firstly, in terms of eligibility um, around applying, there is no need to have a confirmed cholera status or something like that. There would need to be a minister of health or I don't know if there is a delegated authority that, that is el eligible to do that in Afghanistan. It would be whatever is done currently for vaccines who would have to endorse the application. But other than that, the, there is that circular element. You don't know you've got cholera until you're testing for cholera. And so the goal is not to only provide to um, a country with a confirmed outbreak, but to, to provide for countries that have suspected cases that would like to do testing. So that should be good in terms of eligibility. In terms of quantification, I think um, we would be happy to discuss in terms of iterate and work out what seems right. It is. I would hope most likely that the upper end is probably too many RDTs to provide for and thinking about operational capacity might reduce that down. But, um, you know, we're very happy to think through and see what seems like the right number and think through, you know, the number can change over time. Gavi will approve for a first year and then for second years and future years. Um, that quantification can change. So if it starts with a smaller scale pilot in some of the highest risk areas within the country because the operational capacity is more in place to do that testing and you're seeing regular cholera and you think when you need more tests, you know, we would get back in touch and we would we would iterate that. I have no idea on order. <laughs> but Lee really wants to speak, so. <laughs> No, and I just want to uh, follow up on what Beth was saying in terms of AWD cases. From our perspective, the goal is not to test all the AWD cases. It's not to test all suspected cholera cases. The goal is to test enough cases so you have a fair sense of, of your cholera incidence and area. That's part of the reason why we really appreciate the surveillance guidance, because it makes clear that even if you think you've got ongoing cholera transmission, for a given health facility, you don't need to test more than three samples a day. So that's where the, the formula that Beth was mentioning around how many health facilities you have and having three a day is so important is because we're just trying to, again, be in line with the guidelines, for instance, not make sure that every case is tested. Okay. Thank you, Beth. We have a question online from Fred Athanasius. Hello, thank you. Uh, uh, for for giving me the opportunity uh, and, and thanks for the great presentation and uh, thanks to Gavi for thinking about the uh, funding opportunity and then the um, investment in uh, doing field survey. Uh, I have two questions. The first is, um, is this funding opportunity going to uh, countries alone? Loan or is there an opportunity for say regional bodies? Um, uh, I work for WHO at the regional office, and I do know we receive a lot of requests from the countries in the region to provide support whenever they have outbreaks, and uh, it could also be the same for UNICEF. Anyway, uh, so we think that given that we 
uh, at the regional office as WHO, we have the risk calendar of, of the various countries. Uh, we are able to have a visibility of what potentially um, um, uh, an outbreak uh, might occur in a country would, uh, then the regional body is qualified to make an application for such a funding opportunity. Uh, that's one. The second one is, um, I don't know if Gavi is thinking about investing in supply chain uh, uh, support in the regions that regularly experience uh, the, the cholera outbreaks, because I think that would be very important. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, we've had uh, a couple of delays with movement of uh, supplies from uh, the manufacturers to especially our region, uh, given logistics constraints and uh, maybe thinking of having uh, support to have the uh, RDT supplies within the region. Thank you and back to you. Thank you. And so to answer the first question, um, the applications would be for countries to Gavi, and that would be partly just the way the processes and the systems within Gavi work, but also with the goal that this is not just reactive testing during outbreaks, where we know there are some other mechanisms for getting RDTs, but also having systematically and sustainably available RDTs in country in the right place at the right time. And as we spoke about in terms of the capacity being available for many countries to apply, um, that should not be a limiting factor. And if countries apply and have the RDTs um, in the either kind of de deployment sites or in health facilities that they're able to use that if and when there's an outbreak, but of course for that ongoing incidence monitoring and uh, thinking about um, uh, response activities and, um, and prevention activities. In terms of the second question, there is no directly linked cash support. Um, we would, and we have included in the application form details of other operational support that is available, that's linked to surveillance. The health system strengthening grant from Gavi, which is the core grant, the cash grant, operational grant that's available, could be used for operational and supply chain activities, particularly where it's linked to improving supply chain of vaccines within subnational levels. And so countries are definitely able to think about repurposing or using that funding um, towards that goal. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation and the opportunity. I have two questions. The first one is about uh, the pilot study conducted in other countries for test performing. Is it stop or you didn't present the result or is there any opportunity for another country to join? This is one thing. And when you conduct this assessment, I suppose you give them some tests. So what are the conditions if the country is interested to join it? And the second one, I really appreciate the open you have given to add other commodities to, to that additives, especially ringer lactate. Because for Cameroon, we, are, we have a lot of run, of, uh, run out of stock of uh, treatment commodities. And ringer lactate is one of the main which is really difficult to have, even if it is not as expensive as uh, we know. So we have support from WHO, CDC, but we still miss some important commodities to take care of patients. And if you regard, you see our debts, the debt recorded was not, there were not community debts. It was health facility debts, which is very bad. It means that in terms of case management, there's something lacking. And at the time, it's just this uh, ringer lactate. So I want to, it's a kind of advocacy to also push in that so that even if we give additives, it's really good to support also countries in these commodities. Thank you. 
Thank you. And so um, in terms of the first question, the pilot studies have recently, relatively recently started. And so it will be a year until the full results are available. And so potentially at the next GT FCC, well, not the June one, but the, the following one, we would be able to share back and, and the partners involved in it, some of the findings. Um, right now, there's no addition of countries. However, um, adjacent to this, we are working on measles and other um, uh, RDT pilots or thinking of those in the future. Um, they are they will be listed on the Gavi website as well when they become available. But in terms of cholera, I think that um, they're all in progress. In terms of the second question, I need to clarify that Gavi would not be able to provide support for other commodities, but would be keen for countries to be integrating where possible RDTs into existing supply chain to address some of the concerns that the, the previous person asked in terms of having a functioning supply chain to the to the last to the last mile or to the to the health facility. Um, it is it is well noted that there are other commodities and potentially different funding or different partners and different things they could be you know uh, but but Gavi's focus would be specifically on the RDT supply. So thank you very much. Briefly, briefly, two points. Concerning other commodities that we can also uh, need to have them at the country level is the carry blair. Because if you have RDT positive, you need to have the stool, put it in a carry blair to be referred to the lab. And this is also very important to get them at the lab or at the country level so they have the needed equipment for that. Another point concerning your three parts when you find your uh, quantity so you have regular testing at needed testing and supply buffers but also we have the field teams who go and test people when we have rapid response teams so i suggest to add also a place for these rapid response teams because they are are having the rapid test to be used on the field thank you thank you it's, it's great to hear about how the, the work has been done operationally, and that would be a very valid addition to add to the quantification, should that be relevant for a country or other countries. Happy to discuss more in terms of what that looked like for you. Um, I think in terms of Carrie Blair or other uh, things, that might be down the line when it comes to PCR testing, but for now the focus very much uh, just on the RDT procurement, um, but well noted, and, and thank you for flagging things for the future for us to consider. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I have seen that you are you will be using the same RDTs. I mean, we have in ETA catalog of WHO, and uh, I have put an order six months ago, and it have been uh, put in hold because of these global shortages. So why not uh, to work with some company? I mean, some institution like funds to have some this external evaluation. I mean, to go for an other RDTs, I mean, in the market, but what we, we cannot use. I mean, my worries, I mean, a lot of countries in our region, I mean, they are not Gavi eligible. So if you are using the same RDTs we want, we are eligible to use. I mean, what will be uh, for these countries? I mean, we, we our order have been put in, in hold for six months. I can't speak to the to the piece about the hold, but I would say in terms of the validation and working with partners, we do work closely with FIND and other organizations that are working to provide technical guidance as well as uh, validate alongside the WHO, of course, products. We, we too would very much appreciate if there was a longer list of validated or PQ'd products so that we all had more choices, more supply security and a, and a better balance of supply. Um, and so for any partners in the room that are able as well to, to encourage that, we're very supportive of that um, and, and hope that that definitely happens. I'm conscious of time, Nadia is telling me that I should, I should. so thank you. <laughs>